In today's episode, we explore the tragic and complex case of a respected family man and police officer whose secret life led to a grisly murder in late August of 2013. This is the story of hidden affairs, jealousy, and a deadly confrontation. Michael Mike McLennan was 42 years old and had served as a police officer in Johnson City, Tennessee, for over a decade. He was married to his high school sweetheart, Kelly and 40, and they had been together for 25 years. From the outside, their life seemed perfect. Kelly and was a devoted stay-at-home mom, heavily involved in activities at their church. The couple had two young children and lived in a suburban neighborhood. Mike was often seen as a dedicated officer, but behind the scenes, things were far more complicated. In late June of 2013, Mike arrested 18-year-old Skylar Farber for marijuana possession. Skylar, who had just graduated from high school, worked part-time at a local Kroger while preparing for community college. He was described as quiet and reserved by his friends but had a troubled past, including multiple arrests for pot use. When Mike arrested him, Skylar's future seemed uncertain. However, Mike saw something different in him. After the arrest, Mike made an offer. He would drop the charges if Skylar agreed to meet up privately for sex. Desperate to avoid jail time, Skylar accepted. Their meetings became frequent, evolving from occasional illicit encounters to a full-blown romantic relationship. This left Mike conflicted. He felt ashamed and paranoid, knowing that his job, marriage, and public image were all on the line. He was supposed to be an upstanding officer and family man. His feelings for Skylar made him feel alive but also terrified. Kelly and had no idea about Mike's double life. She began to sense that their marriage was faltering but couldn't figure out why and felt stressed, feeling she couldn't do anything about it. Mike did everything he could to keep his affair hidden, even creating fake alibis for his time away from home and using burner phones to communicate with Skylar. Skylar, on the other hand, felt conflicted too. While their relationship helped him avoid jail, he was not emotionally prepared for the intensity of their connection. Mike's promises of leaving his wife and starting a life together never materialized, which left Skylar frustrated and feeling used. The secrecy of their relationship was taking a toll on both men. The power dynamics between them were clear. Mike was the older, respected authority figure, while Skylar felt like he had no choice but to continue the affair for fear of legal consequences. This love triangle made everyone feel trapped in their own way. Kelly and was confused, Mike was drowning in guilt, and Skylar was caught between fear and resentment. But they had no idea of the tragic turn this triangle would take. On the morning of August 28, 2013, a hiker named Doug Harper was walking his dog, Jackie, on a trail near Buffalo Mountain Park in Johnson City, Tennessee. It was just after 8 a.m. when Doug noticed something unusual. He spotted what looked like a pile of clothes in a small clearing near the wooded area. Curious, he approached, only to be shocked by what he found. A man lying face down, motionless, and it was clear he had been badly beaten. Doug later told police he felt a wave of panic wash over him. Doug immediately called 911, his voice trembling as he gave the dispatcher the location. The body was later identified as 42-year-old officer Michael McLennan, a well-known figure in the community. Doug was visibly shaken. When interviewed later by local media outlet WJHL-TV, Doug said he couldn't believe something like this had happened in their quiet town. He had been hiking the trail for years and never expected to stumble upon such a horrific scene. I didn't know what to think, Doug said. I was just scared and didn't want to touch anything. Within minutes, police officers and paramedics arrived at the scene. The secluded area was quickly taped off, and the investigators began to process the crime scene. Mike's body showed clear signs of blunt force trauma to the head. He had defensive wounds on his arms, suggesting that he had tried to fight off his attacker. There was blood on the ground, but not a large amount, leading investigators to believe that the murder hadn't happened right there. It appeared the killer had either tried to move the body or staged the scene to confuse investigators. The brutal nature of the crime stunned the community. Initially, some thought it could have been a mugging gone wrong, but the level of violence didn't add up to a simple robbery. As news of Mike's death spread through Johnson City, friends, family, and fellow officers were left in shock. Mike's wife, Kellyanne, was reportedly inconsolable when she was informed of her husband's death. She and their two children had no idea of what had happened to Mike, and now they were forced to face the devastating reality. When police arrived at the crime scene on August 28, 2013, 
it was clear they had a brutal case on their hands. Officer Michael McLennan's body was found in a clearing near Buffalo Mountain Park, and the scene was disturbing. Investigators, led by Detective Sarah Watkinsbrush and Officer Tom Ridge, immediately began processing the area. Both officers were seasoned investigators, but the grisly details of this case left them unsettled. Mike's body was severely beaten, with blunt force trauma to the head being the apparent cause of death. His arms had deep defensive wounds, showing he had fought back against his attacker. But as investigators looked closer, they noticed something even more disturbing. Mike's genitals were missing. This grotesque detail left police speculating about the killer's motive. Was it a personal attack? A crime of passion? Theories began to swirl. Some investigators believed the removal of the genitals was meant to send a message, possibly related to the Sunshine family and the Society of Zen and Consciousness, new cults that had begun operating in the area. The scene became even more complex when bite marks were discovered on the corpse. At first, investigators considered the possibility of cannibalism, but forensic analysis soon suggested a different explanation. The bite marks likely came from a wild animal, possibly a coyote or other scavenger that roamed the wooded area near Buffalo Mountain. Detective Watkinsbrush noted that the presence of the bite marks didn't seem connected to the cause of death, but rather occurred after Mike had already been killed. It's something we're looking into, she told the Johnson City Press, but we believe these injuries were inflicted post-mortem. Blood was found on the ground near Mike's body, but it didn't appear to be enough to suggest the attack had happened at that exact spot. Investigators used luminol to search for more traces of blood, hoping it would help them piece together the timeline of events. There were no immediate signs of a struggle in the surrounding area, leading the police to believe the attack had either started somewhere else or Mike had been lured there by someone he knew. As investigators combed through the scene, the case was quickly becoming more complex and unsettling than anyone had anticipated. The brutal nature of the crime, along with the strange and symbolic injuries, left police with more questions than answers. The first person police turned their attention to was Skylar Farber, an 18-year-old recent high school graduate with a troubled history. Skylar was well known in Johnson City but not for the right reasons. He had struggled with a marijuana addiction for years, leading to several run-ins with the law. He had been arrested by Officer Michael McLennan just a few months earlier in a routine traffic stop when a small amount of marijuana was found in his car. But instead of charging Skyler, Mike made an offer that would forever change the young man's life. Mike saw an opportunity to manipulate Skyler for free sex, using his position of power to prey on the vulnerable teen. In exchange for not arresting him, Mike demanded Skyler to have sex with him whenever he wanted. Skyler, who was already struggling to stay afloat, felt trapped. If he didn't go along with Mike's demands, he faced jail time and a ruined future. Mike, who had a respected public persona as a loving husband and father, knew how to hide his secrets well. To everyone else, he was a model officer, but to Skyler, he was someone completely different, a manipulative, controlling, and increasingly paranoid lover. As their relationship continued in secret, Skyler's feelings grew increasingly complicated. On one hand, he relied on Mike for protection from the law for his drug habits, but on the other, he felt used and disgusted by the situation. Mike's promises to help him get clean and start a new life always felt empty. Skyler, who had been dreaming of leaving Tennessee to attend college, saw those dreams slipping away. The strain of the affair, combined with Skyler's deepening addiction, left him feeling angry, confused, and desperate. When police brought Skyler in for questioning, they were already aware of his connection to Mike. Detective Sarah Watkinsbrush led the interrogation, focusing on Skyler's tumultuous relationship with the officer. Skyler was visibly nervous, fidgeting, and avoiding eye contact. At first, he denied any involvement in the murder, but under pressure, his demeanor changed. He admitted to the affair but was quick to emphasize that it wasn't consensual. He controlled me, Skyler told the detectives. He had all the power. I was just a body he could use. As police continued to press, Skyler's answers became more emotional. He expressed feelings of betrayal and anger, especially after learning that Mike had been involved with other young men. The discovery of Mike's other affairs sent Skyler into a tailspin, and investigators began to suspect that his rage over being manipulated might have turned violent. Kelly and McLennan, 40, was Officer Mike McLennan's wife of 15 years. To everyone in Johnson City, they seemed like the perfect couple, a loving mother and wife and a well-respected police officer. But behind closed doors, their marriage had grown cold in the past few years. When police brought Kelly and in for questioning after Mike's murder, 
She was still in shock but willing to cooperate. Sitting in the interrogation room, Kelly and opened up about the growing distance between her and Mike. She described how the man she married seemed to change over the last few years. He used to be so present, so involved, she told Detective Sarah Watkinsbrush, but lately it felt like he was somewhere else, like he had built a wall between us. The emotional connection they once shared had faded, and their physical relationship had nearly disappeared. She assumed it was the stress of his job or something they could work through with time. But there was something else that had troubled Kelly and, something she had discovered in their home a few months before Mike's murder. She found a stash of gay pornography hidden in the closet of their son's bedroom, who was away at Bible camp for the summer. At first, I didn't want to believe it was his, she said, her voice trembling. I thought maybe it had to do with his job or it was some kind of mistake. She didn't confront Mike about it, hoping the issue would disappear, but the discovery stayed in the back of her mind, raising questions she couldn't ignore. Could her husband have been hiding something? The police then dropped a bombshell that shattered Kelly Ann's world. Detective Watkins Brush revealed to her that Mike had been engaging in a sexual relationship with a young man. Skylar Farber was manipulating his vulnerable young mind after he met him while on duty. Kellyanne's face went pale as the weight of the revelation hit her. She was stunned, unable to process what she was hearing. The man she thought she knew had been living a double life, deceiving her and their children. Kellyanne broke down into tears, gagging almost to the point of vomiting. I swear on my grandma's Bible, I had no idea, C.H. she saw. How could he do this? How could he betray us like that? The image of Mike as a devoted husband and father was now destroyed, replaced by the reality of his secret life. She couldn't fathom how the man she had loved for so long had been hiding such dark secrets. Her shock, confusion, and anger were palpable. Kellyanne had been living in the shadow of a lie, and now she was left to pick up the pieces of her broken life. As the investigation into Mike McLennan's murder deepened, police uncovered a dark and unexpected twist. While searching through Mike's phone records and personal files, investigators stumbled upon a shocking pattern. Mike had been involved in dozens of secret sexual relationships with young men he had arrested while on duty. These weren't ordinary arrests. Mike had set up these encounters by targeting vulnerable young men, mostly in their late teens or early twenties, often of color, arresting them on trumped-up charges like marijuana possession or disorderly conduct. After the arrests, Mike would offer them a way out. He promised to make the charges disappear if they agreed to have sex with him. The revelation was a gut punch to the local police department. Investigators were horrified as the scope of Mike's predatory behavior became clear. It was a real punch in the stomach, one detective admitted. This bleep was wearing the same badge as the rest of us, and he was using it to manipulate and abuse these bleeping kids. The discovery raised deep concerns about how many more victims there could be. Mike had been a well-respected officer for years, which meant this behavior could have been going on for a long time. There were now fears that other young men, who may have been too ashamed or scared to come forward, were out there. What made things worse was Mike's involvement in community programs like Cops with Kids, an outreach initiative at the local high school aimed at building trust between teenagers and law enforcement. Now police feared Mike might have used this program to get close to even younger boys, creating a chilling undercurrent of suspicion within the department. Detectives worked around the clock, but the weight of what they were uncovering was difficult to bear. The more they dug, the more they realized how widespread Mike's abuse of power had been. This isn't just about solving a murder anymore, lead investigator Sarah Watkins brushed. It's about bringing justice to all the victims whose lives this soiled diaper of a human being manipulated and ruined. The department braced itself for the possibility of more victims coming forward, knowing they were dealing with a much bigger case than they'd initially thought. DJ Owen Moore had always been a troubled kid, a former foster child searching for love and acceptance in all the wrong places. When Mike McLennan entered his life, it felt like he had finally found someone who truly cared. Mike had arrested DJON for shoplifting at a local 7-Eleven in 2011. Like many others, DJON Tate was offered a way out. Mike promised to make the charges disappear in exchange for something far more personal. The relationship quickly turned sexual, but for DJON, it wasn't just about the manipulation. He believed that Mike genuinely loved him. When police questioned Jaunt after Mike's murder, he revealed the depth of their relationship. No one ever loved me like Mike did, DJ Owen told investigators, his voice breaking. He took care of me, made me feel important. I didn't care about what he made me do because I thought we had something real. 
For two years, Jaunt remained in Mike's life, convinced he was special. But in the summer of 2013, DJ ON's world shattered. One late August night, while heading to the 24-hour Walmart on Main Street, he saw Mike's car parked in a dimly lit section of the lot. Curious, DJ ON approached, only to catch Mike in the act, having sex with Skylar, a young man Mike had also manipulated into a relationship. Seeing the two of them together felt like a knife to the heart for DJ ON. He later told police how devastated he was. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was the only one, DJ ON said. It made me sick. I just stood there watching, and everything I thought was real just crumbled. I felt like a fool. The betrayal was unbearable for DJ ON. He had already been struggling with his own identity and self-worth, and seeing Mike with Skylar made him realize that he was just another pawn in Mike's twisted game. Jaunt left the scene without confronting them, too stunned to say anything at the time. But the incident planted a seed of anger and resentment in him, which would only grow over the coming weeks. The Walmart parking lot incident became a critical moment in the investigation, shedding light on just how deeply Mike had manipulated those in his life. DJ ON's feelings of betrayal, combined with the evidence of Mike's multiple secret relationships, painted a picture of a man who preyed on vulnerable young men, leaving a trail of emotional devastation in his wake. Part 8. On the night of August 28, 2013, Skylar Farber confronted Mike McLennan in the parking lot of a secluded clearing near Buffalo Mountain Park. Tensions had been building between the two, fueled by jealousy and betrayal. Skylar felt angry and hurt, tired of Mike's sexual manipulations with him and dozens of other young men. I just wanted the bleep to feel what I felt, Skylar later told police. As the argument escalated, Skylar's emotions spiraled out of control. He later admitted to police that he was high as a kite on marijuana, which clouded his judgment and intensified his feelings of rage. In a moment of fury, he pulled out a hockey puck that he had hidden in his car and beat the puck into Mike, who was taken by surprise and slightly drunk. I didn't really want to kill him, Skyler said, his voice shaky, but it just happened. It felt like I was in a movie, like I was watching someone else do it. Mike fell to the ground, and Skyler felt a mix of fear and adrenaline rush through him. Instead of calling for help, he panicked as he looked at Mike's lifeless body. A dark impulse took over in an act of extreme rage and desperation. Skyler admitted to the police that he ate parts of Mike's flesh. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just so angry. I just ate part of him. Actually, he reminded me of undercooked hamburger, he confessed, adding that he also ate Mike's genitals. This shocking revelation left detectives and investigators in disbelief and queasy. When police arrived at the scene, they found Mike's body in a horrific state. Evidence led them to Skyler, who had fled but was later apprehended after being spotted nearby. Witnesses described a young man running away, and officers quickly connected the dots. Skyler was arrested, and as he sat in the interrogation room, the reality of his actions began to sink in. The weed made me feel like I was in a nightmare, he said, his eyes wide with fear. I never wanted it to go this far. The police pieced together the details of the murder and discovered Skyler's history with Mike, leading them to suspect him as the killer. The relationship that once brought him joy had turned into a deadly entanglement. As he was led away in handcuffs, Skyler's feelings of regret began to overpower the anger that had driven him to commit the crime. I didn't just lose Mike, I lost myself, he said, tears streaming down his face. Skyler's actions shocked the community, leaving them to wonder how love could turn so deadly. His story became a cautionary tale highlighting the dark side of obsession and betrayal. On March 25, 2015, Skylar Farber faced trial for the brutal murder of Mike McLaughlin. The courtroom was packed with family members and friends of both men, eager to hear the details of the case. Skylar's attorney, James Dukovich, argued that his client was not responsible for his actions due to his heavy marijuana use. Skylar was high when he committed this crime, Dukovich explained to the jury. The marijuana affected his mind and made him psychotic. The defense claimed that Skyler's marijuana use had altered his perception of reality. They presented evidence showing that he had a history of using marijuana, which they argued could lead to temporary insanity. Dukovic called in a psychologist, Dr. Ellen Quack, to testify about the effects of marijuana on mental health. She explained that some individuals could experience severe paranoia or hallucinations when under the influence. The prosecution, led by attorney Sarah Jackson, countered this argument by emphasizing that Skyler had been fully aware of his actions during the murder. 
Jackson highlighted the chilling details of how Skyler had killed Mike and then mutilated his body, eating his flesh and his genitals. This wasn't a crime of passion, it was premeditated and gruesome, she told the jury. Skyler knew exactly what he was doing. As the trial progressed, Skyler felt a mix of hope and anxiety. The marijuana defense provided him with a glimmer of hope, but he was also aware that the evidence against him was overwhelming. When the jury finally delivered their verdict, it was met with a heavy silence in the courtroom. Skyler was found guilty of second-degree murder, a verdict that left him devastated. During sentencing, the judge expressed concern over the brutality of the crime and the impact on Mike's family. Skyler was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. As he heard the sentence, tears filled his eyes. He felt a wave of regret wash over him. I never wanted this to happen, he thought to himself. If I could take it back, I would. In the months following the verdict, Skyler struggled to cope with his new reality. He often replayed the events of that night in his mind, wishing he had made different choices. The tragedy of love turned to loss haunted him every day in prison. As years passed, the lives of Skyler, Lee, Kelly and McLennan, and John took very different paths in the aftermath of the tragic event surrounding the murder of Mike McLon. Skyler remained in prison, serving his 25 toop life sentence for the brutal murder of Mike. He struggled to adjust to life behind bars, facing the consequences of his actions every day. Skyler spent much of his time reflecting on his past decisions and the choices that led him to this point. In prison, he began taking classes and participated in group therapy, hoping to better himself. Despite his grim surroundings, he expressed a desire to turn his life around and perhaps help others avoid the same mistakes. Meanwhile, Kelly and found solace in a surprising place. After the tumultuous end to her marriage, she began exploring her faith more deeply. In January 2016, she officially converted to Catholicism and announced her intention to become a nun. She felt that dedicating her life to serving others would bring her peace and purpose. She joined a convent in her hometown of Loy, New Jersey, where she focused on helping at-risk youth and the homeless. Kelly Ann's transformation was widely reported in local media, with many praising her decision to turn her life around in such a meaningful way. John too sought to make a positive impact on the world. Following the chaos of his relationship with Mike, he relocated to Washington, D.C., where he began advocating for criminal justice reform. Jaunt worked with various organizations focusing on issues such as police accountability and the rights of marginalized communities. He shared his story, emphasizing the need for better oversight of law enforcement and the dangers of manipulation within the justice system. Jaunt's work gained recognition, and he was invited to speak at several events, including a panel discussion on youth and criminal justice at a prominent university. As they forged ahead with their lives, each of them carried the scars of their past. Skyler, in his quest for redemption, faced the harsh realities of prison life. Kelly and embraced her faith and found a new mission, while Jaunt used his experiences to fight for a better system. Their paths may have diverged, but each sought healing and purpose in their own way, showing that even in the face of tragedy, hope can emerge. If you have enjoyed the video then make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out any other latest videos.